All right, um, here I have a text file here. This is uh, saved to an extension called OBJ. Uh, Wavefront OBJ is a common model format you'll see in a lot of 3D applications. So I'm gonna be showing you that in Blender. Uh, right now I'm just showing you this uh, OBJ in Notepad++. This is a free program. Uh, Blender as well is another free program. Uh, again, all, most of the stuff, if not all the stuff I'm gonna be showing you is all free. Uh, so you, you have Nothing holding you back. <laughs> you can download it, okay? Uh, some of this stuff is even cross-platform. All right, so here we have the OBJ here, and it's a very simple format, and that's why it's used so widely. Um, so we have here commands, and then followed by information. So the command O defines the object that we're going to build. The command V defines the vertices that we're going to define, and F defines the faces. So what is vertices, and what are faces, and what's an object? Um, so basically, you have... Um, an object is just a placeholder, and you can put anything in the placeholder, okay? It could be like um, a model, it could be a light source, an audio file, an object is just a container. So we're creating a container, and then we're putting this stuff inside the container. And so what is this stuff? We have vertices and faces. So this is better shown in a 3D editor, so let's show in this, this in Blender. Uh, we're going to import that OBJ. So I'm going to go up to File Import and import the OBJ. Open Import. Here it builds a cube. Okay, very simple. We can go into Edit Mode. I select it, of course. And we have the option between vertices, edges, and faces. So we're just concerned about vertices and faces. So the vertices are these black points. They're hard to see, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight vertices, and they correspond, of course, to here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, wow. How many faces do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. We'll just look at where that is. The faces are these things. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So that's what they actually physically are in your 3D editor. Okay, so the vertices are the points. Okay. That define the, uh, I guess, the corners of your shape. And then the faces are the surfaces um, or sometimes called polygons, which are drawn between the points, okay? So if I want to manipulate this object uh, via the file here, I can just change some values here, and we can see how that, uh, I'm going to save that, and we'll see how that impacts the uh, model. So delete this, I'll import that again. And you can see here now the side is, is dragged out farther, just by changing a vertex, okay? Um, then we'll see what happens when we change uh, a face. So let's go in here, and uh, we'll just change one of these numbers to a different number. So let's just pick, I don't know, six. Save that. Import this again. Object, object, and you can see the face is now not connecting to the proper vertex. It used to be connecting here, and now it's just pulling itself over here across the other side of the box, which makes the box look a little bit glitched out. But uh, so that's precisely what it's doing, it's just drawing a face to another vertex. In this case, it looks incorrect because we just picked a random number. Um, so let's go into the file and kind of talk about what these are. Okay. So for a vertex, you have to have three dimensions. So if you didn't know, 3D represents the, the word three dimensions, meaning X, Y, and Z coordinates. So if we look in 3D, let's delete all these objects. Uh, we have a scene grid here, which I can activate the third dimension. So you can see we have an X, a Y, and a Z plane, which we can then build objects into this, this scene, but in three dimensions. So this means that when we define points in a 3D space, we have to define three dimensions, okay, three components, an X, a Y, and a Z component. Uh, these can be positive and negative, okay, uh, they can be any kind of float value that you want, okay, as long as it's a number. Um, okay, now we have the faces. The faces connect between points. Okay, uh, faces uh, can be polygons, which means that they can have any number of connections to draw a surface across. Um, in this case, we have four, which is considered a quad. Quad for four. Um, you do see those more often for uh, the reasons of um, good topology practicing. So you'll see people who are making models will tend to have four. And that's why quads kind of is a coined phrase when you're talking about modeling. Um, and you don't want to get into an n-gon where you're getting into 
many, many, many. So this is considered an n-gon, and you typically won't see them. Now, when you're dealing with video games in particular, uh, they tend to remove the quads completely. And so what they'll do is they'll flip this, and I think what they'll do is they'll take the four here, and they'll take this like that, and they'll convert it into triangles, pure triangles. You only get triangles. So when we're dealing with binary files, we'll be looking for a list of vertices with an X, Y, and Z component. And we're looking for a list of faces, which is also a list of three components, okay? Uh, the corner, first corner, second corner, third corner. You'll see that in the face data as we get into it. Which, what makes this easier to find in the hex editor is actually the fact that these are float points. And if you remember, we talked about float points in the last video. Um, they're encoded to 32 bits, and they have a particular look to them. Uh, you can't really just spot numbers out of them. Um, and you, get, you have to decode them with your hex editor. Um, and they're float, float points. So they, they have a different, distinct looking pattern to them, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and then these are integers. Again, if you remember from the last video, we talked about it. So they have a completely different look to them altogether. So, for example, we'll show this in the hex editor real quick. Um, I'm going to drag in, actually, no, this is already a file I have. Um, yes, um, but let me just let me just grab uh, quickly a better file here. Uh, I think this one. Yeah, this, this one's probably fine. Uh, okay, so we, we have in here, uh, this is a model file, I believe. Um, and we should be able to pick out, just spot out, basically, vertices and faces. So if I scroll down here, I now see a list of indices here. So see if I can scroll up to the top of this indice buffer. So right about here. Okay. So it has a very particular look to it. Okay. Now up here is probably vertices. Now once I spot the indice buffer, the, now the way I can spot this is I can see, you know, ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, six, nines. And then I see a bunch of numbers that are encoded. Now what I usually do is I will look for a pattern within here and then measure across it. So for example, I'll come down here and measure this. So this is uh, 3C. And let me see, can I switch this into decimal? So it's 60. So I'm going to change this to 60. And now when we pull out, I'm going to show you in the text side because it's going to be easier to see because it's kind of large. But you can see a repeating pattern here uh, where this has now lined up. So if we go back over here in the hex view, we see a, a series of sequential numbers repeating. And so within this, we can probably find a float point. So if I put my cursor here, okay, uh, we can see here that the single float point is negative four, which doesn't seem right, because I'm in big endian. Okay, switch it back to little. And now we're getting uh, negative 0.83. That's what this is here. Okay, we can check the next one. And we have 5.6, okay. So these numbers, are within a reasonable range between, you know, negative 100 to positive 100, which is going to be the typical size of an object in 3D space. Okay, so we have 5.6. Okay, we have we have negative 0.8. Um, so if I had something invalid and I click somewhere randomly, uh, this float point here says 1.8 to the exponent negative 39, which means that it's 0 0.00000000039 times 0.1 or 39 times and then one at the end, which is an invalid number. So it's obviously not a float point here. So this comes with experience when you can start to pick out this data, you can find a, a buffer and then you can spot it out. But there's a distinct difference between the patterns of these, this data type and this data type here. And that's why we had to talk about data types. Okay, so um, that's just an introductory to 3D models there, of course, other components involved with 3D models, such as texture coordinates, vertex colors, those sort of things. Um, but uh, to keep it simple, we're going to leave those particular items out of the topic right now. Um, this was just a, a basic introduction to that. Okay, see you in the next one.